Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3304. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. This week, Frontier prepared to deploy a number of fixes for Chapter 2 bugs, SSL Interstellar conduct a galactic census, and David Braben talks about becoming a third-party publisher. A new generation ship has been discovered by Commander Kaladar. Now, for those of you who may be unaware, generation ships have been in the game for quite a while now. In terms of elite lore, they were sent out from Earth many hundreds of years ago, for long before the advent of faster-than-light travel. These vast ships held hundreds or even thousands of people, sending them on a voyage that would last hundreds of years. The goal? To create colonies on long-distance planets. Fast forward to the game year of 3304, and a number of these ships were lost, never to arrive at their destination. From time to time, a player will come across these vessels, and the in-game encounter comes with audio logs, allowing us to hear what happened on their journey. The latest generation ship was discovered just a few days ago in the HIP-114458 system near the stellar body A2. So if you want to head on out there and take a visit, the generation ship will be visible on your nav panel once you are within a range of 1000 light seconds. The generation ships are nearly always worth a visit, so I'd certainly recommend heading out there. The galaxy is a vast place with an elite dangerous, and whilst humanity only occupies a very small area of that space, this nonetheless constitutes thousands upon thousands of unknown stats and variables. It's with this in mind that the SSL Interstellar have come up with the Galactic Sensors, a way to measure much of this information within the game. The primary aim is to get a count on the number of player-made factions along with all the systems that they control and the stats of said systems. However, the project is ultimately far broader than that, as it will paint a vibrant and clear picture of the known galaxy. SSL Interstellar have also released an amazing video describing their project, along with letting you know how you can get involved. Additionally, do check out their website, galacticcensors.com, also linked below. You can go to both the video as well as the website for all relevant details. With the arrival of Chapter 2, a number of mission types have either gone missing or are not generating very often. This has resulted with said missions struggling to appear on the mission board, and this includes the following mission types. Long Distance Courier, Long Distance Delivery, Long Distance Passenger Missions, that's the bulk VIP and sightseeing variety, Long Distance Smuggling, as well as regular passenger missions, again all three varieties, and finally the Rumtar missions. Now, Frontier are aiming at returning these missions to the game, and they are working on a si uh, server-side fix to actually do this, so that means that they won't need to deploy a client fix for this particular issue. On a related note, some players will have noticed that as soon as Chapter 2 went live, that any of their active or complete but not handed in missions were actually removed from their transactions tab. Unfortunately, this meant that affected players were not able to collect the rewards on these particular missions. The good news is that Frontier have updated these players with messages to their in-game inbox explaining the problem, as well as crediting their account with any outstanding credits. Another update that came with Chapter 2 was the installation interactions. These are fun little side activities, although personally I feel they're not particularly rewarding in terms of credits or materials. That said, a number of these installations did have issues that were causing players' game to crash upon arrival at the installation. Frontier have now removed specific installations from the game until they get a fix in place. You can see on screen the installations that have been removed. All other current installations should still be unaffected. The long-awaited Guardian FSD boosters finally made a return to the game in Chapter 2. Originally released in February, or it may have been March, with Chapter 1, the Guardian boosters were bugged to the point that they simply would not work. Frontier had to remove them from the game to fix them, and it's now taken close to four months to get them back in the game again. Unfortunately though, they are still bugged. The situation, however, is much better than the last time. The FSD boosters, which can offer a jump range improvement of up to and just over 10 light years, will work in all regular situations. However, they do not function in boosted scenarios, and these include using the boosted jumps from neutron stars or using the FSD synthesis to increase your jump range. Frontier have stated that they will be deploying a fix in the near future to address this issue, along with a number of other bugs introduced with Chapter 2. Last week, David Braben and Frontier Chief Creative Officer Johnny Watts gave a very interesting interview to Games Industry website. 
The interview is pretty revealing as it reveals Frontier's intentions for the future of the company. These include the two other games that they are currently working on, which for now remain unannounced, and they also include plans to become a third-party publisher. Now, Frontier Developments initially began life as a work-for-hire studio, and they created a number of pretty successful games. With Elite Dangerous and Planet Coaster, they moved over to self-publishing. The next step then appears to be that they want to become a fully-fledged publisher. As yet, there's no further information on this, but do check out the interview as it does have a few very nice details. You can see a link in the video description below. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3304. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.